Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, I welcome you to the lecture number 27 of the course titled Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. So, we are discussing module 9 uh, which is about happiness activities and today will and it is the third lecture of module 9 and that is last lecture of module 9 and uh, overall it is lecture number 27. Uh, so, in today's lecture we will talk about how social comparison is connected to our happiness. So, before we talk about today's lecture, let me briefly uh, you know, give you a recap of the last lecture. So, in the last lecture, uh, we uh, talked about acts of kindness as a uh, as a happiness enhancing you know, activity. So, we discussed uh, the meaning of kindness or acts of kindness. Uh, basically, uh, we said that you know act of kindness basically includes any action that is intended to benefit someone else. Uh, so, at the action level it is acts of kindness and the kindness may have emotional component also. So, at the emotional level we call it as compassion. Then we have discussed you know uh, what counts as acts of acts of kindness. Generally we think when we talk about acts of kindness, uh, it is a great work of charity or some kind of you know help that is you know in you know in a magnanimous forms of help uh, but when we talk about acts of kindness it may include very simple things such as you know smiling saying thank you or few wor <coughs> words of encouragement to someone compassionately listening to someone's problem uh, helping stray animals spending time with people who need some support such as older people uh, it may include compassion towards nature such as planting trees so, the, the, there are diverse activities that are included under acts of kindness. We have looked into the details of all these things. Uh, then we have discussed evolutionary uh, mechanisms of kindness. So we have discussed that uh, if at the, uh, in, in, in there are certain evolutionary uh, mechanisms or natural selection kinds of uh, promotes acts of kindness because acts of kindness is very important not only for individual <coughs> happiness and survival. It is very significant for collective as well as you know uh, or survival of the species because without kindness we cannot really survive. So, in that context we have discussed certain principles or evolutionary mechanisms which promotes kindness such as you know uh, kindness to families. We show special kindness or you know supportive behavior towards families who are very close genetically which is called as kin altruism principle. Uh, then we have discussed kindness to group members, people who are in some way you know, uh, you know part of our group. So, it is little bit larger than family. Uh, this is called as you know mutualism, principles of mutualism. Uh, then we have discussed kindness to people who will return favor, uh, that is called as reciprocal altruism. Uh, then we have discussed you know uh, kindness to others when it enhances one status. Uh, that is called as competitive altruism. So, we have discussed all these principles in detail with the idea that even natural selection or evolutionary mechanisms promote certain types of kindness behavior because it is important for survival of the species. And then we have discussed that kindness is connected to human happiness and when we talk about human life kindness uh, can express in a very you know complex ways and in a very refined ways that uh, beyond this evolutionary mechanism, human beings sometimes you know involve into acts of kindness uh, simply because it gives them happiness. You know that can explain a lot of human behaviors. So you know, people do a lot of charity works and other uh, uh, acts of kindness, which anonymously without really you know getting anything in return, they don't even you know disclose their name. 
So, all these behaviors can be explained. So, why people could be doing such kind of acts? One simple reason is that, you know, it gives them happiness. So, research also shows, you know, uh, kindness is connected to various indicators of happiness. Uh, and uh, the main reason why kindness promotes happiness is that, you know, uh, kindness changes self perception that you feel good about yourself when you do some acts of kindness, uh, your self esteem enhances, your perception towards others also becomes positive because without that positive perception you cannot do acts of kindness. It also helps you to distract from your own, own troubles, troubles or you know, difficulties of your own life. It gives you a sense of abilities, resources, expertise. It also promotes sense of meaningfulness to your life when you can you know, uh, support people, help people, then you, you find your life more meaningful. Uh, uh, research also shows that, you know, acts of kindness can have ripple effect or it can, it can have a cascade of positive, you know, of, uh, consequences where you help somebody, you may get return in help and people may like you. By seeing you, other people may also invo get involved into acts of kindness. So, it has a lot of positive consequences in a long term. Uh, and also acts of kindness satisfied the basic need for, you know, social connections and affiliations. So, it is by acts of kindness we connect with people and which is one of the basic need, human need. Uh, so, it fulfills th that basic need also. Uh, so, we discussed also basically for practicing kindness, one important thing is that you need to have sense, you need to be sensitive towards the needs of the people. and. I know a caring attitude that is more important. So, generally kindness will flow automatically if you are open, sensitive and you know there is a sense of care in your heart. Uh, so, generally you know kindness will flow, genuine sense of kindness will flow. <coughs> so, these are some of the important things that we have discussed in the last class. Uh, today, we will talk about another happiness activity which enhances happiness is or which influences happiness is social comparison. So, let us see uh, what is uh, and in this lecture, uh, we will talk about some of the important concepts such as social comparison and what are, what are its functions, uh, the process and types of social comparison, uh, social comparison and how it is connected to happiness. Uh, then we will talk about social comparison, midi, social media and happiness, how social comparison has become very complex nowadays, especially with the emergence of social media. So, we will see all these things in today's lecture. Uh, Let us see. So, I will start with one question that have you ever wondered about the fact that most of our achievements, abilities and opinions are relative. Have you ever thought about it? That whatever opinions you have about yourself, whatever evaluation that you do about yourself in terms of your achievement, in terms of your abilities or in terms of your opinions that you have, are they absolute or are they relative? If you think about it, you will find most of these evaluations are relative. Why relative? Because we make this evaluation by social comparison. By social comparison, we mean by comparing with other people. So, your perception or your self evaluation, it largely depends on comparison with other people, which is called as social comparison. So, whether you see yourself as intelligent person, you see yourself as a smart person, you see yourself as highly achieving person or you see yourself as a good looking person, you are deriving this evaluation from what? Obviously, there is an objective part to it, but it has a very strong component of social comparison. You are saying yourself as a smart person because you see you are smarter than people around you. So, you see you think you are smarter. Let us say when you, so this is the situation where you feel smarter be, because who, when you are comparing yourself with people who are less smarter to you, but when you compare yourself with somebody who is much more smarter than you, what will happen to your evaluation? You may feel mediocre, you may not feel suddenly you are not that smart. So, a lot of this evaluation and the consequences that happens, uh, uh, that happens uh, or that evaluation that we do about ourselves is largely derived from social comparison. Either you do it consciously or do it unconsciously. So, social comparison is a very significant part of our day to day you know, functionings and it happens on you know, a continuous basis. Okay, so, 
social comparison basically it refers to the tendency of people, tendency of people to compare themselves to others on a wide variety of dimensions. So, it is a tendency within all of us uh, that uh, we tend to compare ourselves with others and it has important functions to play, we will we'll see. And this tendency is there because we are social animals, we are always connected with people, in a, when, we always see people around us and they are also functioning in the same social situation. So, the comparison becomes kind of you know, it is an ongoing process that happens. Now, social, this social comparison provides us an useful guide for our behavior serves many functions, you know. Uh, so, by comparing ourselves with others, it help us to judge ourselves, whether we are doing right or wrong, whether we are going in the right direction. So, it kinds of guides our behavior, what is the direction to go and uh, am I going in the right way or wrong way. So, by looking at other people, looking at the behavior of other people, we kind of make sense of our own behavior or we kind of uh, make judgment about our own behaviors. And uh, they may also have emotional consequences. So, we will see how this may have emotional consequences and social comparison has a very strong emotional component, you know. So, that is how it is connected to happiness. It may affect our self esteem and happiness. So, we will see that also. So, uh, so it does some important functions and it has a important consequences on our emotional life also. Now, uh, from the psychological perspective or if you look at the literature in psychology, social comparison theory was actually an, a first, one of the first person who talked about social comparison in a detailed way uh, is a psychologist Leon Festinger. Uh, he first talked about social comparison theory and he suggested that, you know, we have an innate drive to evaluate ourselves in comparison to others. So, he said this is an inherent drive, inherent motivation within all of us. Uh, to compare ourselves with others in order to evaluate ourselves. For, for self evaluation, how am I doing in terms of maybe abilities, in terms of maybe opinions, in terms of decision making, uh, we tend to compare ourselves with others for self evaluation. And this is an inherent need. This is what you know, uh, <coughs> Festinger said. So, that is the purpose is self evaluation in relation to others. So, this is one of the important concept that he said in 1954. Now, social comparison also helps us to determine how we are doing compared to others. So, it also helps us to determine how we are doing and as compared to others. Are we doing good or bad? So, all this you know social comparison kinds of helps us to determine that. So, it, it helps us to ability comparison, what is my ability in comparison to other people. Then also social comparison uh, help us to determine how we should behave. We learn by observing other people, how to behave in a certain situations. We learn from childhood, from parents, from people around us. We tend to learn by looking at other people. Uh, we, we also learn how to think, what to think in many situations and even also how to feel. So, a lot of this, all these dimensions which are basically you know various opinions that we learn about life, various opinions that we have about various things in our life, all these are kind of influenced by social comparison. By looking at others, we kind of learn them uh, and determine what is right thing to do, what is right thing to think and feel etcetera. So, uh, Research generally shows that social comparison is universal across culture and is evident in young children and is a core feature of social evolution. So, social comparison is very universal thing, it is not about just one cultural people who kind of you uh, know it is not specific to one culture. Uh, it is universal and found in all cultures and it is a it is it can be found in very young children also children the moment they start learning about their environment they start comparing themselves with others uh, so this is something very ingrained within us and uh, it plays very important role and it has very important consequences so what are the functions of social comparison no social comparison uh, we have already looked into some important functions. Let us see some other important things. Uh, the social comparison seems to be fundamental human drive. You know, it is a very important fundamental human drive. As as uh, Festing, Festinger said, 
it serves a variety of functions. So, one thing is that you know it can fulfill affiliation needs. So, in a uh, social uh, comparison, in a sense, you know, help us to connect with people, you know, because when you are comparing yourself with someone else, in a sense, you are making a connection with that person. So, in that sense, it is. Uh, it is also kind of motivating us to connect with people and in that sense it is fulfilling our affiliation needs for affiliation to connect with people which is one of the important fundamental need and then uh, social uh, comparison is important for evaluating the self we have already discussed about it you know the, one of the prime function of social comparison is we evaluate ourselves in terms of our abilities in terms of our opinions and we try to see whether we are doing right or wrong social comparison helps us to make decisions uh, many decisions we take you know uh, by looking at other people by asking other people uh, so other people's life decision may also influence our life decisions so it can also influence uh, how we make or decide something so basically it influences our thinking process and that can influence uh, our decision making process uh, social comparison also can help us to be inspired so, many times by looking at other people, by comparing ourselves with someone, uh, we get inspiration, especially people who are doing better than us in certain aspects and then we look at their life and uh, what they did and from that we, uh, we get an inspiration that okay, if that person can do, why not I, I can also do. So, you, the, you get an inspiration by comparing other persons, especially who are doing better than you in certain dimensions of functioning. Uh, so, social comparison can promote inspiration. Uh, social comparison can also help you to regulate emotions and well-being. So, this part we will look in more detail how it can uh, help you to kind of uh, the emotional aspects. Uh, so, basically you know it is by comparison we also learn how to manage emotions, how to express emotions. Uh, so, in that sense it also influences your well-being also, emotion is connected to your, your well-being. So, we will see a little bit more about this aspect also. So, social comparison is very fundamental inherent uh, motivation within all of us. We do it consciously, unconsciously and uh, it serves very important f uh, functions uh, uh, in terms of you know evalu self evaluation uh, in diverse aspects. Now, let us see uh, what is the process of social comparison, what are the things that are involved in social comparison. So, uh, we will see it in little bit in more detail. Now, when we do social comparison, you know there may be many important aspects to it, you know. So, social comparison process may involve two important dimensions to it. One is called as basically depending on the target of your comparison with whom you are comparing yourself based on that you know we can have upward versus downward social comparison. So, we will see what is upward and downward social comparison. So, with whom you are comparing uh, that will determine whether it is upward social comparison or downward social comparison. A social comparison may also include assimilative versus contrastive social comparison. So, which basically means social who the the person with whom you are comparing, what is your uh, relationship, what is your psychological identification with that person? Are you kind of moving towards that person in terms of liking that person or are you moving away from that person that is contrastive or kind of creating more distance between you and the target. So, based on that it can be assimilative or contrastive social comparison. So, let us see what are these in more detail. So, what is upward and downward social comparison? So, the, there are generally two types of social comparison based on the target nature of target with whom you are comparing. So, one is upward and another is downward social comparison. So, by name upward social comparison basically means it occurs when you are comparing yourself with someone better or superior or have positive characteristics you know. Someone who is better than you in certain dimensions I mean when we say somebody is better than you it is not Know, better than you in all sense, it he or she may be better than you in certain aspects, uh, may be better than you in terms of you know uh, intelligence, may be in terms of academics, in terms of sports, in terms of whatever it is. So, uh, 
whenever we make a comparison with another person who is better than me in certain dimensions, then it is called as upward because you are comparing someone in the upper ladder. So, it is called as an upward social comparison. So, for example, in your class, if you are comparing yourself with someone who is better than you in terms of academics, so it will be an example of upward social comparison because you are comparing yourself with someone who is better than you in the dimension of whatever academic achievement or something. So, that is called as uh, upward social comparison. Uh, the downward some social comparison is just opposite to that and it occurs when comparing oneself, oneself with someone inferior or in some sense negative characteristics. So, in downward you are comparing someone who is down in the ladder as compared to you in some dimensions. So, when you are comparing yourself with someone let us say in your class who is not as good as you, who is little you know, poorer than you in terms of academics let us say when you are making comparison it is it will be an example of downward social comparison. So, we do upward social comparison, a downward social comparison you know many times depending on the situations and both may have different consequences. So, upward social comparison generally causes people to feel inadequate, have poorer self evaluations and experience negative effect. Generally, in general, uh, when we make upward social comparison, we feel inadequate because I am comparing some with someone who is better than me. So, you feel lower you feel inadequate, uh, you generally have lower self evaluations, your self esteem de decreases and you generally experience negative emotions. You do not feel good because he is better than me in that sense. So, it is in general. Uh, uh, so, when we make upward comparison generally uh, it, it makes you feel inadequate, you have a generally poor self evaluation and you tend to experience negative emotions. This is what uh, research indicates. However, sometimes upward social comparison may also inspire people to become like the target. So, in some cases upward social comparison, you are making comparison with someone who is better than you, but rather than making it you know rather than you know this comparison making you feel inadequate, you may feel inspired by it. That is also possible. Many times we get inspiration from people who are better than us in certain dimensions. So, upward social comparison may have both positive and negative consequences depending on uh, other factors that we will discuss. Now, research generally shows downward social comparison generally cause improvement in effect and self evaluation. When you do social downward social comparison compar comparing yourself with someone who is lower than you or poorer than you in some sense. Uh, then generally you feel people feel good good about themselves because at least you are better than that person. So, positive emotions likely to be experienced in that context and you may have better self evaluation or higher self esteem in that context. However, sometimes it may make feel people negative also because it reveals how things could be worse. However, in certain situation downward social comparison may make you feel bad also because you are looking at someone uh, who is you know doing poorer than you or doing uh, not as good as you and uh, you may feel that you know it reveals that you know how things are bad for some people or you may be in that situation also. So, it may make you feel bad also. So, uh, just like upward social comparison, downward social comparison can have positive influence as well as negative influence on your self evaluation depending on the context. What is that context? Context is the next part that we will discuss. So, both upward and downward social comparison can result in a negative and positive effects on self evaluation depending on whether you are making contrastive or assimilative comparison. So, this is the context. So, whether upward social comparison will have positive effect or it will have negative effect on your self evaluation it will depend on whether you are making a simulative comparison or contrastive comparison. Depending on that, it can have 
any consequences. So, let us see what is contrastive and what is assimilative comparison. Assimilation basically uh, means that it refers to compares who is comparing, compares self evaluation changing towards the comparison target. So, in assimilation what happens? You are minimizing the difference between you and the target. So, you are kind of identifying with the target itself, you are liking the target. So, that you are you know, lessening the uh, you know, difference between you and the target and you kind of identify yourself with that person. So, there is a liking, there is a closeness to that person. So, that is called assimilation, you are yourself assimilating with that person. So, the distance is decreased in the case of assimilative comparison. So, so you are moving towards the compar comparison target whoever is moving towards means in terms of liking, in terms of closeness, in terms of you know uh, decreasing the difference. So, that is called assimilation. So, in case of contrast you are doing the opposite, you are increasing the difference between you and the target. So, contrasting yourself from the target, you are you are basically uh, moving away from the comparison target. So, you are kind of not liking the target. So, there is not much closeness with the target. There is a much more difference between you and the target. Uh, there is a lack of closeness, the distance is much more and uh, you are not so, in that sense it is contrast, you are moving away from the target. In assimilation you are moving towards the target, you are liking the target. So, social comparison can be uh, in this aspect also, when you are comparing with someone else whether you are kind of liking or assimilating with that person or you are comparing in a contrasting fashion, so that you are kind of moving away from the target. So, these two dimensions of upward downward social comparison as well as assimilative and contrastive social comparison both may interact to influence our self evaluation. How that can happen let us see. So, this is a kind of matrix where it shows the interaction between upward downward social comparison with assimilation and contrastive social comparison. So, what happens? In case of upward social comparison, when you are making comparison of yourself with someone better than you in some aspect, in some dimensions and you are making an upward social comparison, but it is in assimilative fashion or you are doing assimilative, assimilative kind of comparison. So, basically you are comparing yourself with someone who is better, but in an assimilative fashion. So, you are kind of moving towards that target, you are liking that target. So, distance is decreased. So, there is a more closeness with the target. So, there is a more liking towards that tar target, more identification with the target. Then in that case, even though you are doing upward social comparison, it will lead to positive self evaluation because it is assimilation. You kind of like that target, you are kind of moving towards that target. So, even though it may be upward, but still it will have positive because you like that target or there is a more closeness towards that target. So, in such kind of comparison, there will be a positive self evaluation. You will not feel bad, you will feel actually good or inspired by it. So, most of the upward social comparison where we get inspiration is a case of, of it, it, it is this case, where you are making upward social comparison in an assimilative fashion. So, all the inspiration cases of social comparison comes under this. So, this could be for example, you know we, uh, one example could be in this case is like you know uh, somebody says, my boss inspires me.
So, let us say somebody says uh, my boss or whoever he is boss is in the job place or workplace, he inspires me because he works so hard and he has achieved so much in his life. So, it is an upward social comparison because your boss is in the upper ladder, you know, he is he has achieved more than you in that sense. So, you are making an upward social comparison with somebody better than you in certain dimensions, especially in terms of achievement and you kind of like your boss, you know. So, that is why it is assimilative comparison, you know, you are moving towards the target. So, you say my boss inspires me because you primarily because you like the whatever life he has led, uh, you are kind of inspired by that. He worked so hard and achieved so much in his life and you get inspiration from that and you also think that I can also do same. If he can do, why not I? So, you are getting an inspiration from his life. This is an example of upward assimilative kind of social comparison. So, you are comparing with someone better than you, but getting inspiration out of it because you like the target, you are moving towards the target. Now, in case of upward social comparison, when you do upward social comparison in a contrasting fashion, then you will have negative self evaluation. So, you are doing upward social comparison with someone better than you, but in a contrastive fashion means you are moving away from the target, you do not like the target. So, you are kind of creating distance between you and the target. So, when you do contrastive kind of comparison in case of upward social comparison, it will lead to negative self evaluation. You will feel bad about yourself, you will feel envy, uh, you will feel resentment. So, all these emotions may come up in case of upward contrasting social comparison. One example could be let us say, uh, Let us say somebody says, I feel sad and worried that I do not earn as much as my neighbor. So, you are doing an upward comparison with your neighbor who earns more than you. So, he has much more, you know, income is higher than uh, you. So, he earns more than you. So, you are doing an upward social comparison in terms of earning and uh, you are doing it in a contrasting mission. You do not like that, you know, you are creating distance between you and the target. You, you are not liking that aspect that you know somebody is earning more than you in your neighbor. So, you are doing contrasting comparison, you know you are moving away from the target, you are not liking that person. So, so you are feeling sad and worried about it. So, you may feel envy, you may feel resentment, all this emotion may come up. So, this is an example of negative self evaluation or it may have negative impact on our self evaluation or self esteem when you do upward social comparison in a contrastive fashion. Now, let us come to the downward social comparison. So, downward social comparison again can have positive and negative impact depending on whether it is assimilative or contrastive. So, in case of downward social comparison, when it is done in assimilative fashion, we may have negative self evaluation. So, you are doing downward social comparison with someone. So, someone who is lower than you or at least uh, lower than you in some sense. Uh, so, you are comparing with that person, but you are assimilating with that person, you are like you kind of identify with that person and his life situations, you know. So, uh, in that case you will have negative self evaluation, because you do not like that that person is doing worse in his life or doing poorer in certain aspect of his life, because you will identify with that person and if he is doing bad, you also feel bad. So, that is the meaning of identification. So, in, if you are doing assimilation, assimilative kind of uh, comparison with a target who is lower than you in some sense, uh, then uh, you will feel bad about it. So, that is called as negative self evaluation. For example, you know, let me give you one example here. Somebody says,
my colleague has been fired from the job. I may be in the same situation. So here somebody uh, in the same organization, you know, somebody is working and one of his colleague in the same organization in the same job level is fired for whatever reason and you are feeling bad about it. So fired means in a sense you are having a downward comparison, somebody who is in unfortunate position than you, you are still not fired but somebody else is fired, but you are feeling bad about it. Uh, simply because you identify with that person and his life circumstances. It is very similar to you. He is fired today, you may be fired tomorrow. No, you kind of in that sense you are say your evaluation, self evaluation is becoming negative. You are you may experience sadness. So, so in the, uh, the in the last category is you know downward social comparison in a contrastive fashion. So, you are comparing with someone who is lower than you in certain aspects, but you are making a contrastive comparison. So, you are kind of not liking the target, moving away from the target, then it will have positive uh, self, self evaluation, you will have, you will experience happiness and you, know, uh, you, will exp uh, you may feel good about yourself. Because you know somebody is lower than you and you, you are happy about it, because you may not really identify with that target. You know. So, there is a sense of competition with that person. So, by performing better than person, you feel good about yourself. So, that is the meaning of positive self evaluation here. For example, you know somebody says, If somebody says, I am happy that I scored higher than X person, whoever it is in my class. So, in your class, you have a sense of competition. So, that X, whoever is the target, you are not identifying with that person, you do, may not like too much. So, there is a contrast. So, you perform better than that person, you are feeling good about it. So, because you feel superior now. So, you are, your evaluation is now uh, good or it is positive. So, this is an example of a downward contrastive social comparison. So, uh, so you can see uh, based on the assimilation or contrastive uh, comparison, downward and upward social comparison may have both positive as well as negative impact. And mostly uh, we do assimilative kind of uh, comparison with people whom we like. It could be our siblings, our you know, people in our family, the, the, the people with whom we really attach ourselves, we like them. Uh, so, we in, the, in those cases, if they succeed, they become better than us, we feel kind of, we have experience of, you know, basking in reflected glory, you know. So, in many times, this is the phrase that is used, you know. If somebody is doing better than you, you feel good about it and you identify with that person, okay, my brother is doing so good. So, you feel good about it. So, you are assimilating with that target. So, assimilation generally happens with people whom we like. Who, with whom we have a certain kind of closeness, it could be a very good friend, it could be our family members, whoever it is. Contrast happens mostly in the competitive sense, you do not like the target or maybe there is a kind of competition sense of envy with that person. In those cases, contrastive kind of uh, evaluation happens or comparison happens. So, studies indicate that social comparison are more likely when comparison dimension is relevant to self and when the comparison target is similar to self. Mostly we compare with people who are similar to us. Generally, we do not compare with just anybody, you know. Our comparison is generally, you know, associated with people who are very similar to us. People who are in our neighborhood, people who are in the same socioeconomic category, people who are in my class, people who are in my, you know, in the same job. This kind, we generally compare with this kind of people who are similar to us and who 
and the dimension is important for my life. So, in that sense, we kind of compare with others. Uh, but research also shows people make also compared sometimes with irrelevant targets. So, human being can do anything, you know. Uh, they can also compare with irrelevant people. For example, somebody uh, may be in the middle class category, may compare himself with some billionaire and may, may feel sad about it. It is possible, but generally we do not do that. Uh, generally, because he is so different from us, somebody comparing a middle class person with a billionaire and becoming sad is does not make sense, but still people can do also that. Uh, but generally, we compare with people who are similar to us. A recent meta-analysis shows because basically, basically summary of diff lot of research in a particular area, we call it analysis of the analysis of various studies called meta analysis, show that in the offline context in the general life situation, individuals mostly tend to compare uh, to someone who outperforms them that is upward social comparison in a contrasting manner resulting in lower self evaluation, envy and overall worsening mood. Research generally shows people tend to do more upward contrasting kind of social comparison, you know, you do kind of compare with the sense of envy and jealousy, people who are better than you, but you feel envious about it. So, in a contrasting mission and we experienced lower self evaluation, envy and lower happiness and all these kinds of things. People generally tend to do this kind of comparison, they can do other comparisons also, but upward contrasting comparison is much more prevalent. And that is why it can have a very strong implication in our happiness. We may become very sad out of this kind of comparison. Now, see what is the uh, is connection between social comparison and happiness. Uh, some of these things we have already touched upon. So, research indicate that you know happiness depends on relative income. You might remember in a lecture where we discussed socio demographic factors and happiness, where we discussed. Uh, happiness from the income is very uh, is generally comes from relative income rather than absolute income. So, basically when we talk about relative income means how you are earning as compared to someone else. So, you, you derive happiness from your income by comparing with another person. So, that also validates how social comparison is uh, plays very important role in our happiness. So, even from your income and money whatever you have, you become happier only when you get earned more than someone else. So, the uh, relative income seems to play a very important role in happiness. So, that is also an indirect you know kind of evidence that you know social comparison is uh, very important in uh, you know happiness that people derive from. Um, a meta analysis also revealed that people tend to engage in contrasting upward social comparison in offline comp social comparison also have negative impact on social uh, subjective well being. So, that we have already discussed mostly people tend to do upward contrastive kind of social comparison which has negative impact on our self esteem and happiness. People with excessive tendency of social comparison are more likely to encounter unfavorable comparisons and suffer negative consequences. Uh, you might see is the people who are very you uh, know they, they have a very strong tendency to compare themselves a lot of time. So, this tendency is very strong they do excessive social comparison. Uh, it, they will not be they will be very unstable and they will not feel uh, most of the time very sad simply because you know it will have negative consequences and people tend to compare up, up, upward contrastive fashion it is in the nature of human mind you know so that is why you know they will kind of invite a lot of sadness and sufferings in their life uh, seeking happiness from social comparison is particularly difficult because to get happiness out of comparing yourself with someone else is very difficult why because what no matter what you achieve, there will be someone better than you. You will always find someone is better than you, you know, and you will find reasons to be unhappy. So, deriving happiness by social comparison is very difficult actually, uh, uh, because our mind will find some some better target, you know, always and uh, be sad about it. Now, let us see how social comparison is becoming more and more complex with the emergence of social media particularly social networking sites. Things are becoming very complex nowadays, you know, and it is influencing our emotions and happiness in a big way. So, let us see some of the research findings. <coughs> so, in today's world, social media uh, such as social networking sites, such as Facebook, they provide a fertile uh, ground for social comparison. Earlier, we used to do social comparison only people around us in an offline 
in, a, in, in an offline situation. So, you may have maybe 10, uh, 10, you know, 15 people who may be important target for your social comparison. You know? Now, with the emergence of social networking site, you have hundreds of people in the social network site in your friend list. Now, they are all becoming target of social comparison. So, it is now becoming much more complex and, you know, it is influencing in a much more stronger way. Earlier, you had very few number of people. Now, you have so many people uh, whose life, whatever is happening in their life, it is coming to you. And you are kind of constantly comparing your life with them and it is influencing them all the time. So, users of social networking sites such as Facebook are more likely to portray their success achievements and rosy images of their life. Generally, if you see social networking site, most of the people are all the time, they are portraying the best aspect of their life. Whatever good things are happening in their life, they are always, you know, posting images and the images about that aspect, their achievements, their, you know, successes, their awards, whatever it is they are getting, well, the good pictures of vacation, holidaying, all these rosy pictures, generally people post in social network site. Generally, nobody wants to show their dark side of life. And um, so, what happens? This upward social comparison is becoming much more pronounced in social networking site because you are seeing all the good things in other people's life, and you may feel my life is not good. Others are seems to be enjoying all the time, you know, because you know you have control over what to post. So, people are most of the time uh, posting all the goods and rosy pictures of their life. And you may find yourself always doing upward comparison, you know, and finding yourself inadequate and maybe your life is not so interesting or something like that. So, in that sense, it is influencing you in a very big way. So, in social networking side, people are often exposed to idealize images of others and share more often uh, self-enhancing information themselves. Information which boost their self-esteem, you know, their self-image, people post always post those kind of thing and um, if you are doing upwards comparison and always comparing yourself with their life I know it is going to influence you in a big way and uh, you may feel sad and depressed about it. So, diverse research studies including various cross-sectional, longitudinal, experimental all kinds of studies actually show that social comparison on social networking sites indicate that this comparison typically result in decrease in subjective well-being or happiness. Generally, for most of the people, too much of this social comparison and people who are too much involved in the social networking size actually lowers their subjective well-being and happiness. It actually lowers. Most of the studies indicates that because people tend to do upward social comparison. Whenever they say somebody is doing better than me, you will do it in contrasting manner and you will feel bad about yourself you will feel inadequate, okay, my life is not that good. Because this is the tendency of human mind. Unconsciously, you do that and it will make you sad. Recent meta-analysis another uh, in 2019 indicates that social comparison on social networking side in general predicts a decrease in subjective well-being, which is also same as happiness with a small to medium size effect size means, effect is small to medium effect size while upward social comparison uh, predicted decrease in social uh, subjective well-being with medium effect size. So, generally, you know, social comparison most even in the meta-analysis also shows that it tends to decrease subjective well-being for people or happiness of the people. However, uh, some studies also reveal that, you know, in certain context social comparison in social networking site may not decrease happiness in certain context. What are these context? Uh, one context is that, you know, uh, the comparison is uh, focused on opinions rather than ability. So, if you are comparing your opinions, whether I, my opinion is right or wrong, it may not influence so much, but if you are comparing your abilities, you know, somebody's abilities and your own ability, especially in the upward fashion, contrasting way, uh, it increases, it influences your emotions in a much more way. So, Focusing on opinions rather than ability may not inf influence much. If you are doing downward social comparison, you can do downward social comparison also in social networking side by looking at some people who are no, they are not, their life is not that good as you, for example. In some cases, people may do. Uh, in that case, obviously, it will not 
uh, decrease your happiness. Uh, if you do assimilation rather than contrast to an upward so comparison target, then also it may not decrease your happiness uh, because then you are liking that target. Uh, and uh, if that person is doing good, you may not feel bad about it because you know because of your liking and closeness to that person. Uh, so, in certain context, it may not have negative influence. However, research shows these are exceptions rather than rule. You know, some research, you know, the Vardyun and his colleagues, you know, recent in this year only 2020, and they noted that positive consequences of social comparison on social networking site are exceptions rather than rule. So, this positive consequences are exception in certain contexts it may have an, but mostly people do upward contrasting comparison because of the tendency of the mind uh, and they feel uh, envious and jealous and whatever it is which may decrease their happiness. Some people may feel more depressed also after too much surfing social networking site. So, online social comparison uh, generally have a general negative impact on social subjective well being as uh, revealed by meta analysis. So, the idea is not that you know we are not demeaning social networking site, it has lot of benefits and it has really revolutionized our way of connecting with people and it has lot of advantages. But the problem is if you do too much of upward kind of social comparison and feel bad about it by looking at others life, excessive social comparison that is the problem. Social networking site you know, like any other thing they are they have lot of values in it and they have lot of functions to do. Uh, so, it is not the problem with the social networking side, it is problem with how we do excessive social comparison that is the problem. So, we need to be careful when surfing social network site to understand how our mind is kind of doing this trick and making us unhappy and depressed. So, how to avoid social comparison? Um, I will uh, just uh, read few sayings of few great people. Montesquieu once said that if one only wished to be happy, it could be easily accomplished. You know, to accomplish happiness is very easy. Anybody can be happy. I mean, by inherently most of the human beings in our inherent nature we are happy. Happiness is something very inherently within us. So, it is achieving that is very very easy actually. But the problem is we wish to be happier than other people. So, that is the problem you know. You do not feel happy in your own life, you always compare yourself with others. So, you see somebody is doing better than you or somebody has more than you, you feel sad about it. So, that is the problem and that is the main reason why people are not able to find happiness. And he said this is very difficult because we always believe that others are happier than they are. We always believe that they are doing better than us or something is uh, better in their life as compared to me. This social comparison process is you know taking away a lot of our happiness. So, if you want to be happy, if you just objectively judge and look at our own life, then it is very easy actually, but people because of social comparison uh, they are always finding not stable in their life and always you know finding reasons to be unhappy by comparing themselves with others. Theodore Roosevelt also said comparison is the thief of joy, it takes away all our joys of life if you make too much of comparison of yourself with other people. So, the basic idea is be aware of negative consequences of unnecessary because in this lecture we have said how it can cause negative consequences in your life. So, first is you need to understand that how it is influencing your life. Understanding is very important. Uh, so, be aware of the negative consequences of unnecessary social comparison and avoid it. Unnecessarily comparison is without any relevance you are comparing you know and it will not help you in any way, it will only make you sad. So, avoid as much as possible this unnecessary, sometimes it is required ok, that is ok, uh, but unnecessary social comparison uh, is something you know, it is always taking away all our joys, joys of life. So, try to avoid it. So, too much social comparison makes people highly insecure and vulnerable. You will always feel in unstable, insecure because you will always find you know people are doing this, so I, I should also do that. Uh, so, always will be directed from outside goals and outside things. 
that will make you unstable and vulnerable. Another important thing is practice gratitude and be grateful to what you have and resist and be. So, this is very important and we already had a full lecture on gratitude where we said you know it is important to practice gratitude also. Be grateful to what you have got in your life. Obviously, try to improve whatever is necessary, but you need not always you know compare with other and uh, try to be better than other all the time you know. Be grateful, practice gratitude, be thankful for whatever you have got. So, it will automatically you know all the envies and resentment will vanish. It is only people with lack of gratitude they always complain and uh, you know they have this traits or characteristics of envy and resentment. So, happiness and envy cannot stay together and it is practice of gratitude is something that help you in this direction. So, we already had a full lecture on that and we also discussed how to practice that. Uh, you can uh, you know go and go and go to that lecture. You can use social comparison as inspiration and motivation. This also we can do. Uh, if somebody is doing better, you can always get inspiration from that rather than becoming envious about it. So, you can always do assimilative kind of social comparison rather than hating, disliking that person. You can kind of connect with that person or compare with that person in an assimilative fashion. Uh, so, and get inspiration out of it. Uh, so, that is very important, no? getting a um, you can do social comparison because it is kind of all, all the time it is there, but you can use it for inspiration using it in the upward assimilative fashion. So, that is also a very important. You can use uh, self evaluation using self set standard goals that is more important rather than thinking I should do better than that person. If that is your motivation you will always fail in that target in terms of becoming happier. Uh, because that person may go, go ahead of you then and there may be other people ahead of you. So, it is always better you make your own internal standard. Okay. These are some of the problems or deficiencies in my life. I set this standard and I need to improve. So, you work towards that and improve upon those self set standards. For example, you want to improve your public speaking skills, you think it is not adequate enough then you try to improve upon that, but it, the standard is your own set standard rather than you know thinking that I should speak better than that person, then it is a recipe for you know uh, sadness and misery. So, it is always better if you want to compare, compare yourself with your own internal standards. Okay, This is the standard now I want to improve upon that rather than saying I should be doing better than that person, then you know that negative social comparison will come into the picture and it will you know, it will not help in any way, it will only make you sad and you know depressed. So, these are some of the ideas about social comparison and how it can influence our happiness. So, with this idea uh, I will uh, end today's lecture and then in the next module we will also talk some more important happiness activities. Uh, with this I will end today's lecture, thank you.